Welcome back <sighs> to Classic Car Revivals. We're still on this thing. <laughs> it's going to be a process. But get a little chilly in the garage. I think what do we have eight this morning outside. So I the old fire going. Get it nice and toasty in here. But I've been slowly picking away at this after work. I got the trans tunnel done. Both sides, shifters all. Well, I got a couple, a couple more bolts put in the shifter, but that's all set. I did passenger side cab front motor mount, or not cab mount. Got that taken care of. So I'm gonna put these in. I'd like the truck to have just a little bit of a rake at the moment. It's level, so. We're gonna see what happens. Let's see if I can get these bolts loose. So this kit, just if you can get down this far, old lady. <laughs> uh, you just pull this big bolt nut out, and this goes basically right there in that same slot. And then the shock just goes sets the shock a little bit lower. So I'm, I'm hoping it goes in easy. I'm hoping this comes out easy. But I'm going to hit it with the impact. I don't know how loud it's going to be, but... That was too easy. This car must have came from the south, because usually up here you got to heat them, beat them, all that fun stuff. Trusty hammer might break. Oh wow! I didn't expect that to move either. Usually they seize to the bushing. Nice. Lower the jack a little bit to take some of the weight off. Because I well, mean, there isn't much spring pressure on it. I'm gonna do it anyway, just in case. And I'll leave this one under here, <laughs> just in case my jack decides to do what it did the one time. As soon as that bolt starts going up. So yeah, if you're new to the channel, all my profits are being donated to a lady with cancer for, I say two two months. So what about seven weeks now? Six weeks? Seven weeks? Eight weeks? I don't even. You know, I'm not even worried. It's gonna be. It might be more than six weeks. It might be ten weeks. I have no clue. So, because I don't need any of the money I'm getting from YouTube. I have a full time job. Yeah, hey, uh, let's jack it back up. Use a little pry bar or something. I'm gonna find my pry bar, I'll be back. Almost out. He's coming. There wasn't even any pressure on it. This little stuck. Now I'll lower it down. It should push the arms up and get that shock all the way out of there. 
Yeah, I don't see how this kit is going to do anything. Oh, there's still a little bit of room, but... I guess it's got more room. It's where he doesn't gonna start crushing the bottom flange for the shock. Strut combo. I think that looks about in the right place. Maybe not. That's pretty close, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You should gotta get those wood chips out of there. <laughs> and why are there wood chips in there? Because you ran into the wood chip pile. Because I'm a dummy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when I ran <laughs> it turns out this brake line on this side, they uh they must have blew a brake line or something and they put a passenger side on it. So it was bent funny, and when I turned hard to the left when we were trying to make a short, doing a burnout, it had kinked the hose and it was dry rotted, so it cracked, and I lost brakes coming in the driveway. And I was like, well, I don't want to hit anything that's kind of valuable, so uh, yeah, I ran in the old wood chip pile. So, it worked. Got a few little chips in the truck. <laughs> Don't worry about that chip there. That'll buff out. <laughs> yeah, but no, I felt like an idiot afterwards. Let's see. Let's see what it looks like now. I don't know. It looks like it's going up pretty high. Honestly, I think that might be good. Help if I put it in the right spot. Ah, I clean it up. The pipe they used has burrs on it. I'll return. It just needed a little more weight put on it. So I pushed down. But I got two sockets that fit through. Put through one side. I just eyeball it. Snuggle up some. Call it good. I should probably verify that these all four of these are the same. Just in case the back side's different or something. They look identical to me, so. Quite a bit lower. About that distance. And yeah, I just grabbed a round file, chainsaw file, to get that little burr out of there.
I'm just temporarily mocking that up so I can get the, because you got to drill these two holes. And then, uh, I think it sure looks like there's enough room to, oh yeah, there's enough room to get a bolt on there. So, so yeah, I'm going to find the right size drill bit and drill some holes and I don't know. I might be able to actually just put a shim between there so when I tighten them up it pinches tight just put one long bolt through that might save the might save the aluminum from twisting and breaking at some point so yeah track down drill bit drill some holes get a measurement for spacers I need and go from there Not a, there won't be enough room to get a bolt through there. Not on the back side. Why? Well, because the shock's in the way. I don't like if I like this design. I might just put it back the way it was. Yeah, there, there, I, there's nothing I can do about that back. Not even enough room for a rivet or anything. This plate should be bigger. It should come all the way to should be designed different. That's probably why it was cheap. I'm not even sure what he paid for them, but it's probably pretty cheap. Well, I don't know what kind of kit this is, but don't use it. It's, it's not going to work for what I'm doing. So. The bushing still looks pretty good inside there. Yeah, because. Yeah, even with that moved either direction, there's not gonna be enough room. So. Oh. I'll just do it the old fashioned way. Just put some of those little things in the back springs. You know. It's got shocks. Like the Impala had. <laughs> it, it's, it's only got shocks it does, and, and um, leaf springs. It doesn't have regular springs like the Impala has. Darn. I wanted some pulleys in my truck. <laughs> you got three of them on your engine. Oh, okay, I wanted some pulleys in the suspension system. Well, I'll just heat the springs a little bit with a torch. That'll give me a little bit of a little bit of a drop up front. It it works. I've done it. Might be more work. Get this back in. Uh. Should have just left it alone. Stay happy. It is a new year. It is. I made it one more. Feels like 50 more. Yeah. You can keep them for the next project. I'm glad I didn't take both sides apart. So close. Man. I don't know how they do it from the factory. Maybe it's the sway bar being hooked up. Maybe that's causing some 
little extra tension. More than likely. And we we'll get this back together and then uh, go over some few things we're going to do to the truck still. Yeah. I'll be back. So yeah, this cab mount was actually in decent shape. I just took and welded that. Uh, it's 3 sixteenths? I don't know, it's pretty thick material. So I just got to drill a hole through it, then that's where the bolt goes down through the bolt to the frame. And that's what, how the tunnel turned out. <laughs> Don't look too close. Don't look too close at the welds. <laughs> no, I don't know what's wrong with that welder. It, I'll fiddle with it. It'll burn real good for about two seconds and then it starts acting up. Then I mess with it and then, I don't know. It's probably the fact that I'm running my garage off a 12-3 wire that plugs into the outlet on the outside of the house instead of going into the circuit box. So, breaker box. That's probably what it is. It's drawing a lot of amps and it's not letting it stay consistent. But it's on there, it's not going anywhere, and it's getting covered with carpet. So, you know, I'll ne probably never sell the truck. You might. I don't know. I might just give it away. That's not a bad idea. This might be a giveaway vehicle. Ooh. Actually, I got another one just like this I'm going to be building soon, too. So. It'll be the same setup. That might be a giveaway vehicle. Because I have another Crown Vic front. I just got to go get a Ford Explorer rear end. I won't C-notch that one because I don't, I don't think I needed to C-notch this one. I think it would have plenty of room. But yeah, it's, it's actually not a bad swap to do. It went through pretty quick. But I do got to make a list of what I got to get done. The front clip is still basically just sitting here. It has a couple. It might not even have bolts holding the fenders on. They might just be sitting there. Wiring. Figure out brake lights, turn signals, headlights. I already bought blinker fluid for this thing. So. Where? It came off the Amazon. Yeah. Synthetic blend, LED and filament compatible. Ooh. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Yeah, and they're hard to find. So. Blinkers or blinker fluid? Blinker fluid. You can get blinkers anywhere, but once you run out of the fluid, your blinkers will do that whole fast blinky stuff. So yeah, you know, if anybody needs any. I probably have some to spare because I think this jug lasts up to, or one fill lasts up to 15,000 blinks. So, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably set on blinker fluid, but <laughs> if anybody wants some, I can send some your way. <laughs> and it's the, this company is from America. It's American made, small town. Well, family owned. <clears throat> Thank you for supporting our small business. <clears throat> Apparently, my order had them moonwalking in their office slippers, so. But yeah, I think that was in my stocking or gag gift. But I wouldn't even know where to add this stuff. All right, let's get back on track. Where are we at? Wiring. Yeah. Blinkers. Speaking of that, I got some blink fluid everybody wants. <laughs> no, I'm probably going to end up calling my buddy Nick to see if he wants to come help with wiring. He's an electrician, so I guess residential, commercial, vehicle, it's got to be, it's all electrical, right? It's you know, positive ground, how to get stuff looking tidy. So, but yeah, I got to fill in all these holes. I got this secured in there. I gotta find these have a strap that go over here. I gotta find one of them. Uh, exhaust. I've decided on my exhaust system. I hope it sounds good. I hope the neighbors like it. So I think they're gonna hate it. Yeah, but we got real good neighbors. They've never once said anything. That's true. So and 
I've done some pretty good burnouts out front. So, yeah, they're really cool people. All of them are. The ones I know. Uh, now that I'm off track again. Either way, I gotta make a list. Oh yeah, the exhaust. Black Widows. The neighbor haters. That's what I'm going with. I'm gonna go two into one, and then out the back corner. In a three inch, so... It shouldn't be too obnoxious in the truck. Hopefully it doesn't drone. But, because yeah, 16 hours or 26 hours is probably what we'll end up spending in this thing to get down there. That's a long way to listen to exhaust drone. That's, I can't do it. Well, <clears throat> on a side note, this episode was a bust, but we got something done. Got the truck back on the ground. And if you ever see those things for sale and you want to lower your F100 or Crown Vic or whatever, don't buy them. I, I wouldn't trust it. I Honestly, I wouldn't even trust it if I just drove this thing to town every day. They don't look safe. I don't think... I probably could have made it work with one bolt, but I, that's, I don't, wouldn't do it. Nope. So, yeah. Just getting my hole drilled for my cab mount. <laughs> I actually found these in a, another old Ford I got. They had the cab unbolted, so they must have been planning on putting new cab mounts in it. So I'm going to use them instead of them hockey pucks. So might as well, huh? Yeah, it went through. I guess my old eyeball tape measure works pretty good. So yeah, I just got to jack the cab up a little bit and throw these in and do the same on the other side except I don't have to drill a hole in that one well I got a lot accomplished tonight cab is secured front clip is secured oh yeah she ain't going anywhere doors open and close without hitting the fenders I'm happy I'm gonna try to roll this dent in some cause it does stick out past the fender quite a bit, and when you're driving, I think we'll get a draft in there, and I want to at least kind of take care of that. I don't want to switch the doors because I want to keep this on there. I want to try to clean that up the best I can, try to tape it off, and then when we shoot the truck, we can peel the paint, the tape off, and then that'll be on there because we did more research, and the Harold Pence from Missouri that we found that passed away in 2020... This was his truck, and he was a veteran, and I would love to keep that on there, just in memory of him. I don't know the guy. We're trying to send uh, snail mail to his daughter, and hopefully, maybe they got some pictures of this truck back when it was semi-sort of new, which I think that would be really cool to have something like that, or even see something, even if it's just a picture on the computer. So, anybody out there? Knows this guy's family. I don't remember what her name is. Her last name's different. Pamela Paget, I think. Yeah, something like that. In so, Carrollton, uh, Missouri. Yep. Yeah. So uh, anybody out there, you know, we'll put my email in the link below and, you know, let them know. Tell them I got their dad's or their grandpa's old truck and maybe they'd like to see it again. We'll be heading down that way, heading to Tennessee. So if it's not too far out of the way, maybe we could swing through and let them take it for a drive but yeah um might be out filming tomorrow get a few more things done i want to get the inner fenders in i still got to secure the box bolts are in it they're just not tight but time it yeah, get everything wrapped up and then move on to the wiring the fun stuff the stuff i've been waiting for so all right see you soon cheers have a good night make the plan and sort of work the plan it's been a busy week around here so but yeah like subscribe come back around for some more ridiculous humor yeah blinker fluid we even came up with that all right have a good night i'll see you next week